Hi again. This is Chapter 5 of Coastal and Harbour Engineering. Chapter 5 is about wave transformation processes. At the end of this chapter, you will be able to analyse changes of wave characteristics due to wave transformation processes, perform calculations to determine incident wave characteristics, and also you will be able to use the incident wave characteristics in coastal engineering tasks. Now, waves travelling in deep water with no gain or loss of energy will travel in straight lines and will continue indefinitely showing the same height. Now, however, if these waves travel into a region where the seabed has influence on them, they will be modified. Now, there are, we, we will be focusing on five different wave transformation processes, shoaling, refraction, reflection, diffraction, and wave breaking. Let's look at the first topic. Now, shoaling is a process where the wave height changes due to varying water depth and wave energy speed of propagation. Now, this causes the energy to be concentrated or dispersed, thus increasing or de decreasing the wave amplitude. Now, the change of wave amplitude is measured by the shoaling factor K subscript S. Now, wave refraction is the process in which the direction of a pro propagating shallow water wave is changed due to changes in bathymetry. Now, the part of the wave advancing in shallower water will move slower then the deeper part, causing the wave crest to bend towards the alignment with the contours. Now, the effect of refraction is measured by the refraction factor, K subscript R. Now, this is an example of wave refraction along a straight beach. The bottom diagram shows the refraction due to submarine ridge. Refraction due to submarine canyon. And also refraction along a irregular shoreline. Now let's look at wave reflection. Reflection occurs when the wave energy is reflected or returned seaward by some obstacle during in the path of the wave. Now, the amount of wave energy reflected depends on the slope, roughness, permeability, wave steepness and also the angle of approach. Now, the important parameter to determine the amount of reflection is the surf similarity parameter or known as the irreparent number. Let's look at diffraction. Now, let's consider a long crested wave right, that has variable height along its crest. Now, as this wave propagates forward, there will be a lateral transfer of wave energy along the crest that is from greater to lesser wave height. Now, this process is known as wave diffraction. Now, look at the wave crest orientation in the shadow zone which is altered when this wave passes the end of this breakwater here. Now, let us look at wave breaking. When wave approach the coast, 
it will increase in steepness. Now, as the wave steepness reaches a limiting value, it will break, dissipating energy and induce neutral current and increase in mean water level. The limiting steepness is a function of relative depth, d over l, and the beach slope. This slide here shows various examples of different types of braking waves. Let's continue.